Who's, who's, uh, who's first time? Welcome. Welcome to, uh, who's eighth time? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, however, Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I was supposed to take the trash out. Does that count? <laughs> well, good to, hear, uh, good to be here. Good to see you guys. Who has not seen the finale? Okay. Well, you should Close leave. Close your ears. Because I'm going to ask so many questions about it. We are... <laughs> What is this? <laughs> what are we what are we doing with these? Oh, we're literally tossing t-shirts now. <laughs> Next year we get one of those t-shirt cannons and send someone to the hospital. Almost broke your ankle. I was about to bend it, like, what's his name? Yeah, it's right there. Oh, no, not anymore. <laughs> uh, all right, I have no idea what's happening. What are, what are these t-shirts? I'm glad I looked at them before. They probably had, like... Okay. Fair enough. There you go. Um, are we, we're sitting down? I'm sitting down. <laughs> I think this is just a hey, happy Saturday, let's go. Hey, happy Saturday, let's go. Um, is that apple juice? Sure. Three of them are apple juice. No, th one is apple juice and three of them are like, apple juice. <laughs> So, more apple juice. Yeah, so, the ones that have been... The, the, the ones that are almost empty are more apple juice. I'm gonna guess which one's not juice. juice. This is actual juice. The, is this the actual ones juice? that are full... That's pineapple juice. I run hot, so... Pineapple? <laughs> you mean ananas? <laughs> The only way I remember that is because I think it's banana juice every time. It's like, oh, they left the bee off. No, it's just pineapple juice. It's too early for those jokes, or is it? Thank you. Hey, well, Dickella's saying something. Oh, we gotta go. Okay, we, we, we'll just stay here and talk all day, but that's not what we're here to do, right? No, we're just here to say good morning. Bonjour. Good morning. We will see you all very soon. Love you, love you guys. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you all in a bit. Uh, MC Matt Cohen. It's amazing how you knew. You just knew it was your turn to speak on stage. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's crazy. And hey, where are you guys going? The guy who produced Jared and, and Jensen, I mean Sam Verdine, with his sex is right here. Without this guy, there is no them. That's true. So, I think... You killed it last night, by the way. Oh, see. Photo ops, photo ops. Photo ops. Photo ops. They are all apologizing profusely. That's okay, I like a more intimate setting when I talk to you guys. It's true. Are but I do feel out? sorry. I do feel a little bit sorry for the people that are left. No, you guys need to get no. some real individual Matt Cohen attention. That's right. <laughs> so actually, I don't feel sorry for you at all. You are the smart ones. You tell not. these stories to your grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> No pressure. 
Not sure what he's talking about, but you're welcome in advance. I will do my best. I'm gonna turn this fan on high to slow my sweating down now. Yeah, buddy. Um, guys, round of applause for these fellas. Yeah. 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 Have a good day. Well, well, well. Can we bring up the house lights? Hey, look at these people. Hi, Matt. Raise your hand if you came to karaoke last night. Woo! Good, good. Did we have fun? Yes. Is anybody else tired? Besides? No. no. <laughs> All right, good. Well, this is this panel is going to be very important because you guys are going to come up with questions right now. <laughs> walk to the side and you're going to ask me questions and then I'm going to answer you with nothing. Probably not the answer you were looking for. Okay. <laughs> I nailed it. I'm super happy about that picture. Hey guys in the back, you alright? Everybody, everybody wake up back there? I love that. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, we're building cues here. Let's, should we start with a game? Should we spin the spinny thing? Should we get some of that going? Right? Spinny thing! Here we go. Let's see what happens. Do we get, are we ready? Are we queued up on the music? We're right back at the circus, ladies and gentlemen. Right back at the circus. I really hope I don't have to drink any of this. Sing or dance? Sing or dance? Dance! Sing? Dance. Sing? Dance. It sounds like you're all saying sans, sans. Has anybody seen Moana? Yes. yes. Not enough of you for me to sing that song, because then the rest Please. of you are going to look at me. And Yo, I only know one that? line of it. Ready? Do it. it goes, um, I've been standing at the edge of the water long as I can remember. Woo! That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Moana, see it. I think it's the best Disney movie ever. I want to be that yes. girl so bad. <laughs> um, how about this? Young lady over here is going to ask a lovely question, and then I will give a mediocre answer. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, my name is Marie. Hi. And yesterday you said something about a book called Fangasm. Yes. You something. Sure. And I wanted to ask if you have ever considered writing a whole book, maybe with the title Hashtag You, because I love your Instagram account, and I think you're an amazing person, what you say on stage and everything. Oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, those are you don't know. I wrote a chapter in this book, the Fangasm book, at the Family Doesn't Don't End With Blood, and you should check it out. I signed a bunch of them yesterday. That was my first time actually even seeing the book in person. I haven't even uh, had a copy. But yeah, I've thought about writing a book. I just haven't come to a conclusion of how or, or what I want to say in it. I think that I wrote a hundred page inspirational book already, but it wasn't good enough, so I won't put it out type of thing. And so I'm waiting for the idea that feels right, the idea that's going to help people um, and, and help pay, uh, pay positivity forward. I just have to figure out how to make it perfect before I should. I would buy it. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sure sooner or later I'll write a book. It might be a, a green room tell all supernatural Woo! convention book. Um, and which I'll have no friends after I write all the secrets <laughs> and share them with you. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Hi, step right up to the microphone. Oh wait, we're gonna go to this side. Look, we have a person. Hi, friend, how are you? Hi, I'm really doing well. I'm a little hangover. Yeah. <laughs> Not me? So great. I'm just kidding. I'm literally sweating from walking right now. So. I feel better now. Good. What's your question? Uh, I had much fun at the karaoke list yesterday. Good. Uh, I was wondering, what's your favorite song to sing karaoke to? Wow. Um, Jesse's song. Favorite song. I mean, there's so many good ones. I thought last night, I thought the way we did karaoke last night was the best way we've ever done it because we were able to pick the songs <laughs> that we love and force you guys to kind of sing them with us, which was nice, rather than you guys pick the songs which I have no problem with, but occasionally you get one of those real slow songs and it kind of slows down the mood a little bit and you like to keep it cranked up. Uh, but if I had to pick one song, I would have to go with the theme song from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Because it. it's short it. and it doesn't take a lot of vocal talent. And he pretty much just talk raps through the whole thing. So does everybody know the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? He's, 
He's a worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> I did. Oh, Tom did it. Great. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's your favorite karaoke song to sing? <laughs> What's your favorite karaoke song to not sing? What's your favorite song? <laughs> Do you like music? <laughs> What was it? I, I do like music. What's your favorite song? I don't think I know. I'm going to go ahead and say your favorite song is Carry On My Wayward Son. <laughs> followed by Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed Thank it. you for your question. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. How's Karaoke it going? Karaoke was so much fun. Yeah, hell yeah, it was. Uh, I wanted to ask you um, how Mac is doing and if you have any stories. Um, oh my god, so many stories. I have, those of you who don't know, I have a two-year-old son. He just turned two last April, and he is a little ball of sunshine and a complete little monster. He runs around my house destroying things. I'm going to share one of those special fatherly stories with you guys that, I guess, uh, raise your hand. Anybody, any parents here? Anybody with children? So you guys will be able to relate to this. The rest of you will think I'm just disgusting. <laughs> So the other day I put him down and he's taking a nap and I have like a little baby monitor above his crib so I can see, you know, when he wakes up, I can run in and grab him. So he wakes up, he usually sleeps for like an hour and a half, two hours. He wakes up like 30 minutes into his nap and he's like making a face and I can't, there's, I don't have sound on the thing, it's just video. So I see him and he's like, mm, and he's like, he's holding his hand right like by his face and he's like, look, it looks like he's looking at his hand, but he's, He's laying sideways, you know, in the crib, and so my view is just this, and he's like, this is what I see, and he's just like, mm, and like, I can't tell if he's crying or not. So finally, I'm like, all right, I'll give him a couple minutes, maybe he's going back to sleep. So he like, opens his hand, and he like, it looks like he goes to like, wipe his face, or itch his, his eye or something, and he goes, Ugh! what is going on? I run upstairs. <laughs> And he sits up in his crib as soon as I open the door, and he's sitting there, and he's looking at me, and he goes, Dada, poop! <laughs> poop! <laughs> and I'm like, what, what happened? What, there's poop? Did you have poo-poo in your diaper? Did you poo-poo in your diaper? He looks at me with the saddest face, and he goes, <laughs> Dada, poop! <laughs> hunt! Poop, hunt! He must have, at some point, Check to see if he had poop <laughs> in his diaper, so his, his fingertip was covered in poop. I know it sounds like, for those of you who don't have children, it's like the weirdest thing to hear, but it's like the most sad and most beautiful moment ever. Because you just can see the innocence of a child in that moment. Like, he doesn't want to go poop in his diaper. He had to. He couldn't believe he did it, so he checked it. And then it was on his hand, and he just wanted to go back to sleep, but it smelled gross. So he couldn't, and he was just like, Dada, poop, hunt, poop, hunt. And it was just like, it's one of those moments. Like, it's like that. Those are the memories of the best part about being a parent, and also, you know, the other part. Of being a but you take, you carry that with you, you know. Like when I leave my family and I get in the car, I go to the airport, and I'm emotional every single time I drive away from them. I, I hate being more than ten feet from my wife and child. And then you get on the plane and you smile to yourself as you're falling asleep because you think of those stories, and those stories always keep you running back to your family. It's the poop on the hand that always brings you home. Anyways, thank you for your question. There's no better way to start a Saturday off than a good old poop story, you know? She likes it a lot. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, I think hi. I'm really going to draw out your question for like 30 minutes because you're the last person standing up. Oh, oh my god. How are you and what is your lovely question? I, I'm fine, and you? And uh, first of all, I'm so happy to see you again this year. Me too, I'm happy to see me again again. Thank you, you remember me. I don't remember you, but I wish I did. I barely remember me on most days. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask if you did have uh, fun uh, to play in How to Get Away with Murder, yes. uh, with uh, the great, uh, really great Viola Davis, and um, 
um, the fact that I was really sad that uh, you had uh, a few episodes because you, you went in jail. <laughs> That's so sad for me and I was hoping to see the, your character again. And, oops. <laughs> Me too. I'm, look, I was falsely framed. Those of you who don't know, I did a couple episodes of How to Get Away with Murder, and uh, it was awesome working with such a, a, a unique group of kids. They're so smart, those guys over there, and Viola obviously speaks for herself. She's who I want to be when I grow up, you know? She's just so talented and, and so beautiful and so sexy. She just, she's such a strong, powerful woman. Um, I should be I should have been brought back to that show, right? Like, I was framed with drugs in my trunk. I was an innocent boy, and now I'm in jail in Georgia. But the yes. problem is, I'm on another ABC show. I'm doing General Hospital, and so they that's also an ABC produced show. So they're not pulling me from one show to put me on their other show. But maybe if you call the executive producer. <laughs> Just tell them I'm, I'm willing and ready whenever they want me. I hope too. It's a great show to be on. It's a really, uh, a, you know, a cool, a cool way they tell those stories. You know, when that, when you typically you hear like, ah, it's a lawyer show. You know, they can get boring, but that show is the furthest from boring. It's really great. I'd love to go back. Not as bad as I'd like to go back to season 13 of Supernatural, but you know, I'll take what I can get. They're. Uh, they're both spectacular shows, full of full of great people. Uh, thank you for your question. Thank you very much to you. Of course. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Do you want to come up here and drink some of this apple juice? I can't. Good. <laughs> Me. I'm taking medication, so I'm not smart, allowed. smart woman. That is, I'm going to use that same excuse later when Jared and Jensen try to make me do it. Unfortunately, wait till I get out of that medication. I am <laughs> just kidding. How are you? What's your question? Um, Jared Jensen's ambitious resume, what would it be? Wow, way to put me on the spot. That is a good question. If I want skill, um, I mean, the obvious answer is charisma on all three behalfs. You don't become really successful kind of on the level that they've all gained success without charisma in the, the town of, of Hollywood, you know, you, you have to be a people person, you have to be able to adapt to all people, and I think those three men exude charisma, as well as so many other things. I think family would be another trait I would put on their resume, and to mean, and to mean it in so many different ways, the way they uh, kind of treat the, the crew and the guest cast that come on to that show, and the way they perceive you guys and you guys perceive them, I think... Um, you know, family's a big one, and compassion. Compassion is another one, you know. You either you either have a heart and you use it, or you have a heart and you don't, you know, and you make excuses not to use it. And those boys consistently use their heart, and they act with their heart, and I think that's why we're standing on this stage eight years later, and that's why we're gonna watch the 13th season of that damn show that should have never lived that long. A, a, a show, hour-long drama with two male leads to live 13 seasons. I, I don't know if there's any other show in history that's ever done it. Maybe, maybe one, but karma, compassion, and family, those, that's J, J squared to me, so, and Misha, J2M, I should say. Is that how you guys, it's J2M, right? Thank you so much for your question. Thank you for the answer. Of course. Hi. Uh, I'll take the apple juice. She doesn't take it. Just ask me. <laughs> I will literally bring it, bring it over to you, and you will hate what's in it. Um, to keep the level up of the alcohol, like just don't get into the hangover. No, you better drink some water today. <laughs> right? So drink some water, and take your vitamins, and eat I some am. vegetables. <laughs> yeah, I will. Thanks. A week, <laughs> two more days of this chaos. <laughs> Friendships forming between the actors who weren't even on the same episodes, yeah. like on the convention tours. So my question would be, what do you think someone has to have, like a certain trait or characteristic, to make them stick on the convention tour and get closer to you guys? I think they have to be willing to blur the line between what is considered fan and celebrity. You know, I, I think you have to be willing to 
you know, give to you guys more than just here's your autograph, here's your picture, give me your money, go home. I think you know, that you have to be willing to share a piece of you and a piece of your heart, and I think all these people do it. I think Supernatural has become like this crazy, uh, just like this exceptional life experience for you guys and for us, all, all at the same time. You know, I was talking about this the other day, and I was like, with these guys that I know, especially especially in this circumstance, like Adam I met yesterday, David, Sasha I met yesterday, you know, these are just good people that are around and they have good hearts and like a, in a matter of hours, it was like I'd known those guys for my whole life. It was the same thing with Jensen, Jared, Misha, the Marks, you know, everybody, all the girls involved. I mean, we, we have become a family and I think it's because we care tremendously about the show continuing. We care tremendously about one another, as if we're brother and sister or, or family, true blood family. And we care a whole lot about what we give to you guys rather than what we take from you guys. You know, so I, I just think it's that. I think it's, in this business it's very easy to take because a lot is, a lot is given to you. You know, in the entertainment world, in Hollywood, money and items and art, you know, material things, but it's, about what you give back that makes you great. It's just, it just is what it is. You could be a mediocre actor, but if you give your heart and soul to the people that support you, you're a, you're a great person. You know, and we appreciate you for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it. It's a big family, and you guys, it's now your job to tell the rest of the people that aren't in this room right now, which is most of you, <laughs> how important it is that they cherish our family, our our supernatural family, man, it's it's a big deal. It's a bigger deal than than the new the newcomers might believe. So we got to make sure all the newbies understand that. Well, who's new in here still? Anybody? Any new? Welcome to the weirdest family <laughs> you've ever been involved in. Uh, you'll always be taken care of here. You'll you'll always find a friend here, and it's you'll always find comfort and acceptance somehow. So you're really lucky to be part of it. Hi, you over here. Hi. 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 Um, so you were just talking about season thirteen, and that made me um, want to ask you this question. So if you do come back, which would you prefer, as Jordan or as Michael? I mean, from your point of view personally, how would you think from these characters, John or Michael? How would that affect the storyline that's going to be going? Well, the storyline would get much better because I'd be in it. Um, no, I, you know, I, that's a, that is an impossible question to, to answer. If they brought me back as Mary Winchester, I'd be happy. You know, it doesn't, <laughs> I have, you know, I love playing Michael. He's has no rules and I just got such a small taste of him, you know, in that, in that episode. And then a kind of a small taste of like Lucifer in the baby episode. Any character on that show, just to be on that show is such a, you know, it's just an exciting, fulfilling experience. You're working with people you love, you're doing it for a show you love, for fans that you love. It's just so positive. So to pick Michael or John, I couldn't. I mean, there's, I have reasons to love both, right? Michael is interesting, edgy, and he's an archangel, so essentially he has no rules on his acting. Young John is naive and honest and... Uh, it's in the 1970s, you know, which is a fun time to play young John, although I've aged a bit, so maybe it would be like late 70s, early 80s if you brought him back. I, when, does anybody know when the year uh, John died, by any chance? Does anybody know that? About 2005. I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> no, I don't know, but I, I'm, e either one would be great. What is it? Scream it. 2006. Are we sure? Yeah, okay, we're 2006, so, yeah. Sometime in between then and there, I can play a slightly older version of Young John. Before he goes fully dark and uh, becomes the person you guys all love to hate and hate to love, I don't know. Uh, any character on the show would be a pleasure. You know? Let it be John, let it be Michael. Just bring me back. <laughs> Just bring me back. Let me tell one more story on that show. Let me do one more scene on that show. When they called me to do Baby, it was like the best day ever. I was so excited. I was filming How to Get Away with Murder. And this is what we did. We filmed, I filmed How to Get Away with Murder 
Wednesday morning to Wednesday late in the wee hours to like 2, 3 a.m. into Thursday morning. I got on a plane at 6 a.m., flew to Vancouver, went straight to the set, sat in the car with Jared for seven hours trying to film that scene, filmed it, went straight back to the airport, and then went to a convention in Minneapolis. So it was a wild, wild, tired time. But I think that's kind of why I liked the episode so good. It was honest. It was my kind of like my most honest port portrayal of that moment that I could bring. Because when you're, there's something that happens to actors when you get so tired, when you've worked for 20 hours or 18 hours on set, your creative mind kicks into the most honest place it can be. Because all, all that's all you have is the energy to just be in that moment, you know? Just be in this scene, in this car, with this boy. That's all you have left. And so I'm super proud of Baby. And I have no idea why I went on this tangent, but this is where we are now. So thank you for your question. Did I to answer your question, I guess? John, Michael, they're both awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I really hope to come back. Me too. And you know what? I think I'll be back. Honestly, in my heart, I will tell you this. I have a gut feeling, I have a good gut feeling, I always follow my gut, that there will be at some point, somehow, some way, an R2M episode with Richard Robinson. Yes, yes, please. In the same episode. It's, yes, it's a dream. It's and our dream too. Yes, I've read plenty of fan fiction about it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean it can't be reality, right? So keep our fingers crossed for the G rated, the very innocent version of that episode. Thank you again. Very good question. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi, good morning, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, I wanted to ask you as an actor, is there, are there any performances that stand out for you or inspire you uh, from film or TV? The, yes, yeah. there's so many, obviously. The, the, the countless numbers of, of acting performances I'm astonished by. Most recently I watched uh, this movie Lion. I don't know if you guys yeah, are yeah. familiar with it. it was up for some Oscars, it may have won, pretty sure it won. You guys should see this movie, Lines, this beautiful story about these two brothers who were kind of separated and raised by separate families when they're very young, and then they, it's the one brother's journey to find the other brother, and it's just, I cried like 10 different times in the movie, it was so good. If you don't wanna cry, don't watch it, because you will cry, I assure you. If you watch it and don't cry, you should talk to somebody because your emotions are screwed up. But it's really good. You should check it out. What else is out there? I'm a huge Moana fan. I know, like, I'm trying to get Richard on board. You know, all my buddies that have kids, I'm like, have you, have you seen Moana? It's just the most powerful woman I feel like Disney has ever presented is this Moana League character. She's taking over her father's position as chief on this island and the music is spectacular and there's this giant golden crab that sings a great song and the rock is in it yeah. we all know who the rock is right yes. it's like a mega super maniac muscle star i don't even know what you call him he gets his own definition but you would never think that an ex wrestler could be such a charismatic cartoon and he just steals the show so Performance-wise, everybody in Moana really stole the show for me. I know the lead character who plays the lead girl is actually, uh, I believe, a Hawaiian girl. Yeah. And she does a tremendous job, and The Rock, and, and everybody that's in it. The, I forget the guy's name, but have you seen the movie? Yes. yes. Tamatoa, the big yeah. crab. He, it's one of the guy, the guy from Flight of the Concords, and I just yeah. think he's, he's literally in the movie for one scene, and he's so funny. It's good. Listen. If you take anything from this panel, it's that I love you people, I think Jared and Jensen are handsome, and you should see Moana, all right? Those are the three main details of this panel. Other than that, you don't have to remember any of it.